Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Fried Turkey. Over the years, I've smoked and roasted turkeys just about any which way I can think of. So this year, when we started talking about what are we gonna do at ATBBQ for the holidays, I said, I wanna fry a turkey. Not just fry it, we're gonna smoke it, and then we're gonna fry it. We're gonna do that for a couple reasons. One, you pick up just a little bit of smoke flavor while that bird hangs out in the smoker pre-frying, and two, it helps to dry out that skin. As that smoke moves over it, you start to dry out the skin of the turkey. Now, I think one of the reasons people are a little bit intimidated by frying a turkey is the safety factor, which I totally get. But I can tell you that the drier a bird is, the safer it is to fry it, and the better your skin's gonna turn out. So, it's a win-win situation here. The first thing we're gonna do is prep our turkey. We got about a 14 pound turkey. We're gonna inject it all over with this really great butter mixture so it stays super juicy inside. Then we're gonna get it on the smoker while the oil heats up for the frying. I've got a 14 pound turkey that we're gonna be smoking and frying today. Uh, you wanna make sure you get it completely thawed out and then just go at it with some paper towels or a towel and get that excess moisture off the surface and out of the cavity as much as possible. One of the great things about this recipe is there's not much work to do on the turkey itself. We're just gonna really inject it, very little trimming. Now the injection's gonna add a lot of the flavor to our turkey today, but before we get that injection going, I also wanna hit it with some seasoning. And, and I like to get my hands underneath the skin, especially on the breast, so that you can get your seasoning right there on the meat. We can get part of the thighs, the bottom of the legs. And we're seasoning this today with our Cattleman's Grill Trail Dust. This is just an all-purpose seasoning. It was originally based off a mixture of uh, kind of a Texas brisket um, amplified with garlic and thyme and mustard and a few other things. Do the same thing at the top of the breast. Just pull that skin back a little bit. We're gonna put some seasoning on the skin as well, but a lot of that will kind of just crisp out during the frying process. So once I've got a good amount of seasoning in here, I'm just gonna put this thing back together. I kinda like that sometimes these store-bought turkeys and, and sometimes, especially this year, you might just kinda have to take what you can get. But they give you a real simple way to kinda truss it back together. All right, so let's go ahead and mix up our injection. Now the base of our injection is butter and we're using two sticks to get started here unsalted butter that way we can add all the salt and flavor that we want on our own we get to decide how that salt goes in there and the way we're going to do that is with a couple tablespoons of our butcher house brine so typically i would mix this into water and soak a bird or whatever else you're brining in it like overnight we're going to do a fortified flavor here this is salt pepper garlic onion really straightforward a little sugar we're gonna pump it up with a couple ta tablespoons of our pit fire hot sauce, which is not a uh, hot, hot sauce. We're really using it for that vinegar and just a little bit of kick. And then I want some garlic in here as well. Break that down pretty fine on the microplane. Just one clove will be enough. And then you can either just shake this like crazy or I'm gonna use the immersion blender to really emulsify it. So we'll load all this up into our pistol grip injector and we're gonna inject this bird all over, especially in the breasts and that white meat that dries out a little bit quicker, but also in the thighs and in the legs maybe even a little bit in the wings. So we'll poke around in here just a little bit, create a little pocket, give it a couple of pumps and move on. So make that white meat priority one, and then once you feel like you've got that uh, pretty well injected, you're gonna start getting low on your injection and you can move on to our legs here. 
Let's just put a couple pumps in there and our thighs back here. We'll hit those in a couple different spots. All right, so after that, maybe you do a pump in the wings. And I would say the rest of it, just go ahead and pump it in and or around the breast. All right, that's about it. We've got just enough of our butter injection left over to kind of rub all over the surface to act as a binder for our rub. Now we're gonna hit the outside with the trail dust. It's pretty well seasoned, so the only thing I want to do before we get this on the smoker is we'll tuck these wing tips back so they hold in a little bit tighter. Today we're going to do our smoking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 150 degrees right now with hickory pellets. Now 150 is as low as we can set that thing, and the reason we're doing that is one, you get the most smoke output the lower you cook, and two, we don't want to actually cook this thing too far because we want it to spend some time in that hot oil, make sure everything gets crisp before we overcook the inside. Now immediately once I get that turkey on, I want to start heating up the oil because it's going to take a good hour to come up to temperature. So I'm going to put my turkey stand in here to give me an idea just how high this oil level needs to be knowing that my turkey's gonna stand, oh, just a little underneath where this, or my, my turkey's gonna come up to just about the top of the turkey stand. And I'd say you don't wanna get any closer to the top than about six inches down. So we'll get this up here on the Bayou Classic. This is where we're doing our frying today. I'm gonna start it out over high heat. My turkey's been on for about an hour and a half now. You can see it's taken on some smoke color already. That skin's nice and dry on the surface. So we are ready to put this thing in the fryer, which has been stabilized at 375 degrees. We're gonna go upright, straight through the cavity here. Let's head over to the fryer. So we've got a couple probes situated, one in the oil for our fireboard that's reading at about 375 right now. That's where we want it when we drop the turkey. The other one's actually gonna go in the breast of the bird. Now, moment of truth, we're gonna lower this in nice and slow. The flame is shut off just in case we overflow. We don't want any extra fire going on. We're just gonna inch this down until it's fully submerged. That's why it's a good idea to have a little cardboard right in front of your fryer as well. Now that this guy's fully submerged, that oil temperature is going to drop to about 325. And once everything's kind of calmed down, we'll get the flame going again. We'll make sure that we maintain that 325 for the duration of this cook. One of the features with this Bayou Classic Fryer is first you turn the power on, then you turn the gas on, then you light. You can regulate how much or how little gas you want coming out. Now this is gonna shut off every 15 minutes as a precaution. So set a timer for every 14 minutes, come back out, push the button. Actually, sorry, you'll push this button down to make sure that it resets. It just wants to make sure you don't burn your whole house down. So we're about 22 minutes into this cook right now. 146 on the internal, it's holding nice and steady, real, real close to 325 on the oil temp. So we're aiming for 150 internal when we pull this out. If you look at the graph of this cook, the internal temperature on that turkey started like this and it's just gone up and up and up. And that means that it's not going to stop cooking as soon as we pull it out. It's going to keep cooking. So we got to pull this pretty low. 150 is ideal so you don't dry out the breasts. Once again, the flame is now off so we can avoid any possible dangerous situations here. But would you look at the color on that bird? My goodness. That is looking pretty. I'm gonna pluck this thermometer out of here. We'll take this over to the table. 
Look at that butter coming out. I can't wait to taste this one. I want you guys to check out this skin and just how crispy it is. Look at that. You can hear it. it sounds like crackling. Incredible. I'm dying to taste it, but we got to give it a little time to rest first. All right, it's cooled down just a little bit. It's time to slice into this thing. We're going to start by just taking a few slices off the breast here. The next one, we'll go ahead and carve out the entire breast so you can see how that's done. But boy, look at that. That is juicy. Got pockets of that delicious butter injection. My goodness. That is a thing of beauty. Whoop. Hit the breastbone. All the way all the way down in there. That is some beautiful white meat. Oh man. The crunch on that skin. Unbelievable. It's a very savory bird. Mmm. That butter. It's just flowing throughout that white meat, carrying all that flavor from the butcher house brine. There's really no heat at all from that pit fire, but you're getting a little twang that there's some vinegar in there as well. It is just juicy and delicious. Let's check out the dark meat. We're just gonna kind of pop this out here and follow right along the edge of this bird. Yeah, you don't even hardly need the knife for this part. So there's your turkey leg and your thigh. We'll cut right in between those, pull them apart and pop that joint. Tells you right where to cut, makes it easy. Look, one incredibly lucky kid is going to get to eat on that leg like he's at a renaissance fair. Meanwhile, I like to just shred up this dark meat. Got a little cartilage on the edge of there. But this now should be at a temperature where it's nice and silky. The dark meat, we usually don't have to temp because we're waiting on the white meat to come up. But if we were to temp it, you know, we'd find it's 175 plus, And that's where this stuff just becomes stringy and silky. That's my favorite bite of turkey right there. That dark meat is absolutely my favorite part. You cannot stop it from being juicy. Mmm. And the flavor's just as on point as it was in the breast. There's no denying there's some magic behind a fried turkey. Like I said before, the smoke, it's subtle. You're not putting that smoke on it necessarily to pump it full of smoke flavor as much as you are quickly kind of drying out the skin so you get it nice and crispy here at the end. But the two work together really beautifully. Now before we wrap this up, I'll go ahead and show you how to carve out that breast whole so that you can slice it really neatly if you want to do that for a platter. So for this technique, you're just going to find that breast bone and you're going to want to cut down right along the side of it. And you're just going to follow it all the way down to the rib cage and start to carve out that direction until that whole thing comes right out of there. My goodness, look at all that butter still in there. Love it. So now you can kind of take this thing, take a look at the way that those uh, grains, those muscle fibers run. They're going like this, which means that we don't necessarily want to cut right with them. If we're going to cut across those. And how pretty is that to be able to spread that out on a platter just like that? Taking that other thigh off, I'll pop that joint. But I'll tell you, if you're the one carving the bird and you're not doing it at the table, or even if you are, my favorite little most tender bite of meat is right here, this little oyster that sits right along the backbone. And that is the juiciest little piece of meat on this whole bird. I mean, the thighs, you know, everyone gets a little bit of thigh. Only the guy carving out the turkey or gal gets that bite right there. 
Mm. Pure tur turkey goodness. You don't even get all of the extra flavors because they didn't inject it. It's got a little seasoning on it, but that is just pure turkey goodness and you earned it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. As a matter of fact, we'll have everything you need to make this specific recipe in a kit so you can buy it with one click and take all the stress out of your Thanksgiving planning. You'll find a link in the video description below. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.